Catching a wave is an awesome feeling. Whether it's simply on your belly or on top of the water on a surfboard, it's one of the most addictive experiences in the world. And because it is so addictive, today I thought I'd spend some time clearing some things up when it comes to actually doing it. Today I'm going to talk about three different strategies that there are for catching waves and as we go along we're going to get more advanced and more in depth. If you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure you do now because this is How To Rip's Lesson of the Week, a show where we release two new surf tips every single week. And if you want to come and join me on Instagram or YouTube I'm at Kales Broccoli but for now let's just go surfing. Let's go right back to the basics to start off with. When you're beginning as a surfer, you'll probably surf smaller, more gentle waves like this. And that's where our lesson starts off. The first strategy to catching waves is via the white water. Let me give you a demonstration. Let's dissect this approach some more. It is a perfect beginner strategy for catching waves. However, there are some significant limitations we need to point out. When catching white water like this, it's almost impossible for a surfer to move across the face of the wave in a left or right direction. And instead, he has to go straight toward the beach. And this is fine, but it does get a little boring after a while and doesn't offer a lot in terms of progression. Also, the surfer is inhibited by the white water and can only harness a small fraction of the wave's potential power. In order to perform cool maneuvers or ride the wave for a longer time in the pocket, he would need to be on the face, but on the white water, often the wave just peters out and is over within a few seconds. Because of this reason, catching small white water and riding it requires a specific board type, something very buoyant and readily able to pick up the small amount of power the wave has. If you try to catch white water on your standard shortboard and try to stand up, it can be a pretty short ride and, let's be honest, a little bit embarrassing. Surfers at this stage can either paddle into the wave like this, or if it's shallow enough, they can stand and use their moving momentum to jump on the wave with the board like this. It's important when catching white water to activate the banana, like I spoke about in my last video. This means arching the back in a smooth shape to prevent you from nose diving. Because white water waves tend to dump their power onto the surfer, it can be more likely that they'll nose dive. Prevent this by activating the banana. Once you are propelled almost in front of the white water, it's time to stand up, go through your pop up and enjoy the wave. This is really the first step in surfing and we obviously encourage people to move past it as quickly as possible because contrary to popular belief, it's actually much easier to catch waves before they turn to white water. Let's go back out the back where the waves are breaking quite nicely and we'll catch some green waves and we're going to use super slow-mo to break down two more strategies that I want to talk about for catching waves. Catching waves from out the back can be a very exhilarating experience when progressing from whitewater waves. It can also be a little scary so make sure you know what the conditions are doing and are comfortable with what's going on. One strategy to catch waves out here is to sit and wait until a wave arrives that works for the position you're sitting in out in the lineup. You can alter your position to get closer to the ideal takeoff zone next to the pocket of the wave by paddling like this. Something to note here is that in the earlier stages of your surfing career, the further you have to paddle into the ideal takeoff zone, the more tired and thus more prone to making a mistake you'll be. This is why it's important to be selective and careful using great wave knowledge and conditions assessment when deciding which waves to paddle for. If you have to paddle toward the beach to go further in to catch the wave, this can also cause challenges because you can't always easily see and assess what the wave is doing. Activating the banana shape will help you be able to glance back over your shoulder to see what's going on. 
last strategy that I want to talk about is something you guys have been requesting for ages and it's really effective. It's called the pivot and swing. Let's go do it now. I demonstrated the pivot and swing in my banana video, paddle faster and longer. This seemingly complex movement with the surfboard is actually super easy. Let me show you. This technique is so powerful that it makes it possible to catch waves with only a few strokes. How cool is that? Whew. Well, I thought I'd uh, take a break from being out in the water and come in the pool to show you guys the pivot and swing motion. Essentially what it is, is me, rather than spreading my weight out on the board, I'm concentrating it by sitting towards the back of the board and using that to actually pivot on. It's like when you were a little kid and you used to go to the shopping center and you'd roll around on the shopping trolleys and to do like radical turns on the shopping trolley, you would lean back, lift up the front wheels and use that to pivot on. So let me just show you here in the pool how easy it is. This pivot and swing is probably the most advantageous strategy to catch waves with because it allows one important thing. Can you guess what it is? Well, it allows us to face the wave the entire time before we catch it. This means that we can constantly make small assessments and adjustments to our plans once we actually catch the wave itself. Adjustments to how quickly we want to take off and generate speed, the line we want to draw, the turns we want to do, all of this should be running through your mind as you paddle into the wave. The pivot and swing fully enables this experience. This really is my preferred way to catch waves out in the lineup, so much so that I actually position myself accordingly when I'm sitting out there, rather than sitting further out and paddling in to catch a wave, I'll actually prefer to sit in, paddle out, do the pivot and swing and catch one. That's how much I enjoy it. Now remember that the size of the board will impact your ability to perform this skill. A longer, thicker board will be slower to twist through the water because of more resistance, whereas a smaller board will naturally knife through much easier. This is why we recommend that beginners in the later stages, all the way up to intermediate surfers, use fish surfboards instead of large, bulky, long foam boards. To get better at the pivot and swing, come to some flat water like this pool here and practice on the surfboard you plan on riding. So there you have it. I hope that this video helped you in some way to go out there and catch more waves using those strategies. Remember that in this sport, the majority of your time is not spent on the wave. It's spent negotiating the ocean between the waves. And the better you are at that, the better your ratio will be, the more time you'll spend surfing waves. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, let me know in the comments below what else you want to see, what else should we cover, and make sure you come and join me on Instagram or YouTube at Kale's Broccoli. Guys, the surf's still cooking. So I'm gonna get back out there. See you later.